I want to talk to you about a couple couple phrases. Um, first one is um, because you have because you have accomplished, you will always accomplish. But because you have accomplished, you will always accomplish. The second one is because you have never accomplished, you will never accomplish. Okay, so think about those. Most people, most people in life, most people in our society fall into one of those. Even though they seem like extreme statements, because we're saying always and never, right? And so anytime you say always and never, you think, well, that's extreme. But most people fall into one of those two categories. They think because they've accomplished, it entitles them to accomplish more. It entitles them to that because they've accomplished. Or they think, because I've never accomplished, I'm subject to a, to a life without accomplishment. It might not be a whole life. It might be lack of a, I'm subject to a career without accomplishment. I'm subject to lack of accomplishment in a subject. Like whatever it is, most people fall into one of those two things. Most people fall into one of those two things. And the way we look at accomplishment Coach just talked about it. If we're going to apply for a job, what do we do? What's the first thing we do when you apply for a job? You send a resume. What does the resume say? It says all your accomplishments. So before you even apply for a job, you send them a paper that has everything that you've ever done in your life. Or most of the, the highlights of the things that you've done, your accomplishments. And then that employer looks through a bunch of those and then judges them and says, hey, this person's accomplishments seem better than this person's accomplishments, so I'm gonna interview this person for the job. Then you interview, and then ultimately someone gets it. Someone gets it based on their accomplishment. And so what we do is we value that. We value that. And I'm not saying this to say that it's bad to value accomplishment. I don't think it is, but we value that because it changes the way we address people. If someone's accomplished something, we'll address them differently. They've accomplished a certain number of degrees, we'll call them a doctor. They've, if they've accomplished a, a number of championships or a great career, we'll call them a Hall of Famer. Right, like we value accomplishment. But here's the people you need to be careful of. The people you need to be careful of are the people that overvalue accomplishment. The people that overvalue it. Because it can be overvalued and it's dangerous. It's dangerous because People that overvalue accomplishment misplace like how impactful it can be and what it holds for, for you in your lives. And what I mean by that is, if someone comes up to you and starts to talk and the first thing that they say is they say, here's what I've done. And they start listing what they've done. Or someone comes up to you to talk to you about someone else and they say, here's what she's done or here's what she, Here's what he's done. I'm immediately less interested in what they have to say after that. Like immediately. Like that's how you tell someone overvalues accomplishment. They know one walks up to you and says like, hey, like I overvalue accomplishment, right? Like you gotta figure it out. You gotta figure it out. Here's how you tell. What comes out of their mouth, what prefaces, thoughts, they're talking about their accomplishments or other people's accomplishments first. That tells you they overvalue it. I'm immediately less interested. I don't care what you've done. I don't care. I want to know what you're about to do. Like, that's what I'm interested in. Like, I want to know what you're about to do. Not what you've done. What are you about to do next? What are you going to do in the next year, the next five years, the next 10 years? That's what I'm passionate about knowing. And I want to be around people that are passionate about that. Because what you've done in the past doesn't matter as much to me. It doesn't. I wanna know what you're gonna do now and what you're gonna do in the future. I think that people that have accomplished the most, they understand that the most. They understand that the most. So they understand that their accomplishment doesn't define what's next. It defines what happened. It doesn't define what's next for them. The other thing about accomplishment that I think is really important is the hunger you have to chase after it. The hunger you have to chase after it. The best competitors, like that hunger is really, really special. And it can't be dull. 
Like it can't be. Like they're chasing after that. They're consumed with chasing, chasing the next accomplishment. Yeah, and um, like talking about hunger, I was I was thinking about because like I'm hungry all the time, like physically hungry, you know. And um, I was I was thinking about that because the only way like I can get satisfied is to eat, right? Like there's a couple ways I can get satisfied. There's a couple ways like my, I can dull my hunger. Like one is to eat. And the second, I don't know if this has happened to you all, but you're hungry and then you, you wait so long before you eat and then you end up like you're not hungry anymore. Has that ever happened to any of you? Like that's happened to me. So like hunger, hunger can be dulled by accomplishment or it can be dulled by long stretches without it. Think about that. It can be dulled by accomplishment, like you achieve, that's you eating, you achieve, you're satisfied, or it gets dulled because you have such long stretches without it, like you lose your hunger. And that's what happens, like that's what happens to people, right? We like we talked about those two extremes. So the best competitors find a way, their hunger has endurance. Like they find a way to have it, even if they accomplish, even if they have long stretches without it. Like that's, that's it. So we talk about like accomplishment and how do you do it and how do you achieve it, but it really comes down to the hunger that you have for it. And then does your hunger have endurance? And can it withstand achieving something or can it withstand long stretches without achieving it? And if I boil it down for you, like that's what it is. That's what competing is, right? So you wake up every day, it's the hunger that you have to chase the accomplishment that you want as a group. That's competing. And then does that hunger reside amongst the group? Every practice, every game, every time that you're out there. And fighting to not have that hunger be dulled for anything, not for anything. The last thing I'll share with you is, um, you know, my parents used to tell me all the time, like surround yourself with great people. I'm sure some of your parents or almost all your parents told you that, right? Like be around good people, surround yourself with good people. It's really important and that's true. But I, I would add to that lesson that my parents taught me is, is surround yourself with good people, but be an active participant. Like it's not enough to just be around people that want to accomplish. It's not enough just to be around people that are hungry. Like you have to be an active participant. Otherwise you're just sitting there, you're just sitting there in the front row with your feet on the wood and you're watching it, but it doesn't help you. So surround yourself with good people and then be an active participant in chasing the accomplishment, active participant in being hungry. And now you got an opportunity to, to accomplish yourself and to keep doing it, keep doing it, okay?